When creating a character, it's important to take into account which server you plan to play on, as well as the current state of the meta on that server. Most builds don't have the mobility required to change servers, so you want to make sure you know what you're getting into. But which server is the best choice for you, and which abilities can give you a leg up on the competition there? This is the first of a new series which will examine all of those things and more. Today we're taking a look at one of the more notorious servers, Australia. Australia is known for being one of the most dangerous servers in the entire game and this is by no means unwarranted. There are a few reasons why the meta there is so scary. Reptiles as a whole are generally mid-tier. We've talked on this channel a good bit about how most snakes are garbage, and how the unique moves available to lizards generally don't end up being worth the investment. With that said, the Australian server seems to be the one with the most high-tier reptiles. It has not one, but two different groups of crocodile builds, one of which being the Saltwater Crocodile, the highest ranking crocodilian build in the current expansion, due to their super broken zero to death combo and health regeneration ability. It's also got most of the top tier lizards, the Monitors. While the best Monitor players opted to play almost exclusively on the island server of Komodo, Australia's got many of the runners up, including the Parenti. It's also got plenty of the more gimmicky lizard players too, but I digress. Australia is the only server where there are more venomous snakes than there are non-venomous ones which means snakes on average are actually one of the top builds there. You may remember from my snake video that the top tier snake build is the Cobra, and while they don't have the intimidating hood ability, Australia's Inland Taipan, Brown Snake, and Tiger Snake are all technically Cobras. They've got the same well-rounded base stats and neurotoxic venom you see in your classic Cobra build, which brings me to my next point. Venom is so dangerous because it takes only a single wrong move and just a single bite or sting to spell the end for you, and Australia is packed full of players who'd be more than happy to do just that. I've already talked about snakes, but it gets worse. Going for a swim but picked the wrong spot? One brush with the box jelly and it's game over. Reaching into a confined space? Pretty risky when the piercing bite of a funnel web spider could cost you everything. This isn't really a specific trait but rather just the uniqueness of everything there. Most experienced players will be able to jump into a new playthrough on a new server and have a general idea of what to expect when they encounter a novel build, simply based on there being similar builds on other servers. But what on earth are you supposed to expect when you meet something like this for the first time? What are its weaknesses? Its strengths? Nothing about its appearance gives you any idea at all about how to go about combating it. And the same goes for quite a few of the most popular builds there. The relative abundance of jank makes Australia a really unforgiving place for newbies. While all of that can definitely be frustrating to play against, it's important to also recognize all the things Australia is lacking in. Number 1, a lack of tanks. The best tank builds tend to be mammals, which opted for high defense and HP. This tends to come at the cost to mobility, making it difficult for tanks to function as carnivores, and so most tank players tend to choose the herbivore faction. Unfortunately, Australia's abysmally low rainfall means the spawn rate for plants is too slow to support a large herbivorous tank. This leaves the rushdown and ambush based builds without a counter and lets them get away with strats they otherwise shouldn't be able to. Number 2, a lack of powerful mammals. One of the reasons reptiles do so well on the Australian server is because instead of having to deal with their worst hard counter, carnivorans, they instead are faced with a different group of mammals, marsupials and monotremes. I won't beat around the bush here, these builds are mostly low tier, for one very specific reason, low intelligence. The majority of marsupial players go for the small generalist approach, similar to rats and raccoons, but they're missing what makes these builds so effective, problem solving. Marsupials, such as wombats, wallabies, opossums, and kangaroos all lack the perk that allows most mammals to access higher intelligence-based abilities, the corpus callosum. Since they don't have this, the best strategy is to drop the generalist playstyle in favor of the mobile herbivore. This is actually what makes kangaroos the only marsupial builds to break out of low tier and find their way into actual relevance in the meta. While they aren't tanks, they've essentially taken inspiration from the rabbit or gazelle build and made it bulkier at the expense of intelligence. But even so, if you compare competing builds that have similar stats and strategies, intelligence is almost always the tiebreaker. It's why even though they're relatively new to the server, dingoes and feral cats are oppressing their marsupial counterparts, like the thylacine and the quoll. Which brings me to my last point. Lack of stability. The Australian meta is at a major tipping point. While there's no meta that went unaffected by the Anthropocene expansion, Australia saw the highest influx of new players, and also the highest rate of quitting of any current server. 
Even though more unique builds exist there than almost anywhere else, the high tiers are mostly full of invaders. Dingoes, cats, humans, cane toads, rabbits, and yellow jackets all conquered the server because they exploited the weaknesses within the meta. Since things are changing so fast, it's difficult to offer advice on how to succeed in Australia, but I'll give it a shot anyway. First, Venom is one of your biggest concerns when trying to break into the meta there, so putting some points into Venom resistance can go a long way. Builds like the Mongoose, Honey Badger, Boar, and Secretary Bird have done well in other servers by using their resistance to Neurotoxin optimally, and I could see builds like these being serious contenders if they gained a foothold in this region. Second, and this would be much more difficult, but kangaroos are kind of getting away with success that they don't deserve simply because they're too big to beat without risking a lot of damage. A build capable of one-shotting them with a stealth attack or simply overpowering them with strength and bulk could find itself reigning supreme. Big cats like the jaguar and leopard could excel there, but I could even see cheetahs pulling it off, especially since there aren't lions and hyenas to bully them. Bears would also be an excellent choice. Nothing here could stand up to a charging grizzly. Lastly, in my very first video, I discussed how the cane toad's optimized poison ability allowed it to spread across the Australia server unchecked. While they're definitely a tough build to beat, intelligence-based bird players seem to have found a way to defeat them without triggering their poison effect. This advanced technique means Australian corvids could potentially have a niche all to themselves without spending any points to unlock poison resistance. So there you have it, an in-depth rundown on the state of the Australian metagame. This was a bit different from my normal tier list style videos, so if you enjoyed it and want to see me cover other game servers, the comments below are your best way to let me know. Special thanks to my patrons for bringing my monthly pledges out of freefall and allowing me to continue bringing you guys top tier content. If you're still here, I do have a shoutout slash wholesome story I'd like to tell. I'm not going to drag this video out, so instead I'm just going to let you guys read the story in the video description. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I'll see you all in 2018.